Welcome to Discover the Santinez Valley. I'm Shelby Sim, and this week we've got a show packed with food, wine, and art. But first, let's get checked in at the Sideways Inn. You may recognize the Sideways Inn from a certain iconic film that was shot in the Santinez Valley a few years ago. It recently had an amazing remodel and I'm looking forward to talking with General Manager Matt Bernard about what this property has to offer to visitors. Matt, thank you so much for having us out to the Sideways Inn in Buellton. Of course, happy to have you here. Thanks for coming. Yeah, tell us about this really gorgeous property. Yeah, so this is really our flagship property within Highway West for our hotel portfolio. We acquired it in 2016, so we've had it coming up on four years now. It was previously the Days Inn with its uh, pretty memorable windmill, and that's how most people know us in the mm -hmm. valley. And it's undergone a total renovation, top to bottom, all 112 guest rooms, the on-site bar, everything has been completely redone. Yeah, everything looks updated, it's modern, it's sleek. You really feel comfortable being here. We do, and that was really the point. You know, it's design driven, but we wanted it to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And we like to feel we're sort of this hidden gem within the valley that people don't really know us right off the side of the highway, but you come in, you're comfortable, you never have to leave because everything you want is right here. And you, and you really can't tell you're right off the freeway. And, uh, and Buellton is really the gateway to the Santinez Valley. So a lot of folks have been traveling through Buellton for many, many years. And so it's a, it's a great start off uh, to spend uh, several days in the Santinez Valley. How how many uh, rooms do you have? Here? 112. 112. And are there different categories of rooms? There are. So we have our standard rooms, which are sort of our entry point, uh, and then we go all the way up to our king premiums, which are one bedroom suites, and everything in between. Some of our rooms have outdoor space with either a balcony or a patio, so you can sit outside with a glass of wine, enjoy the nice Buellton evening. We've got a couple of fire pits scattered throughout the property, so it really creates this great environment, especially at night as everyone's winding down from a day of wine tasting, mm. just to settle in and get cozy. Wine tasting, uh, that uh, uh, brings up something that uh, uh, there was a, uh, a movie a few years ago that was uh, filmed in the area that was a rather uh, uh, big hit and it continues to, to thrive. Um, and I'll leave that to you for you to figure that out. Uh, what kind of things do people do in uh, Buellton? What uh, kind of folks stay here and what can they do? Sure, so we get a whole range of folks. So obviously we get people coming up and down the coast to go wine tasting, but of course the valley itself has so many other hidden gems, whether they're visiting the ostrich farm or they want to go down to Industrial Way to try new restaurants and distilleries. And we get a lot of wedding parties that come in. You know, there's not much better place than the valley to have a wedding. So on the weekends especially, a lot of families that are traveling and a lot of international guests too, whether they're coming from Asia or from Europe to come and visit Solvang and travel the California coast, really kind of runs the gamut. And I love that our property welcomes all of those people. We're not designated as one type of guest. It's really a comfortable space for everyone. And uh, tell us about some of the amenities. Uh, we used to have your very traditional hotel buffet breakfast room and you would go in in your pajamas and it's 20 other people and not a very comfortable right. experience. So we sort of rethought how can we do this to make it more convenient and we came up with this knock and drop concept. So you fill out a menu similar to room service like you would at any hotel. You indicate the time frame you want it delivered and then the next morning someone comes by, it's a very simple knock on your door. Everything comes nicely packaged and it's hanging on your doorknob. So whether you want to enjoy breakfast in your guest room uh, like a lot of our travelers they're heading off either to go into the valley to wine taste or off to their next adventure and it's all portable so it makes it very convenient that sounds like a lot of fun yeah innovative it is yeah. and it's fun to deliver too when we first launched it at yeah. six in the morning
morning, you know, going around the property, right. getting that sense of it. Um, it's just a phenomenal experience and that added level for our guests because it is included as a part of your room rate. It's not anything extra you pay for. It's just that added included amenity. That's fun. And I'm sure it's fun for the kids too to open it is, that door absolutely. and see the food out there. Uh, and you have a, a lounge on the property? We do. So our Sideways Lounge um, used to be the clubhouse bar. Um, very different vibe then. It has, again, gone under a total transformation. Very different. Very different. <laughs> uh, and in my mind, it's one of the finest watering holes in all of the valley. Yes. Um, you know, you walk in, you wouldn't necessarily know it's you're beautiful. in the Ulton. Yeah. We love it. Yeah, that's great. And it's a full bar. Full right. bar. We do have food as well. Yeah. Um, so it's a comfortable spot that you can show up and coast all day. Sundays, you know, we carry uh, the, all the football games and do wing specials. So it really kind of runs the gamut of what you can get in there. And so besides the actual on-site uh, amenities, you also work with uh, a neighboring uh, property? We do, so our sister property, the Flying Flags RV Resort, is connected here to Sideways Inn. And so our guests have access to all of the amenities of Flying Flags as well. So that's multiple swimming pools, bocce ball courts, basketball courts. There's an on-site cafe that hotel guests get a discount, a general store with anything and everything you could imagine. So what I love about this property is you get the very traditional hotel feel, but you have all of the amenities of resort included with it and you don't find that in a lot of other places. Ah, that's fantastic. Uh, anything else that uh, we're missing that you'd like to tell us? We just love being here. You know, we're so convenient. We're the great spot to really launch your destination trip in the valley, right off the highway, easy walking distance to a lot of things and it's just really a very special place. Terrific. Uh, how can we find out more about the Sideways Inn? Sure. So you can go to our website, sidewaysin.com, or you can go to highwaywestvacations.com and you can explore all of our sister properties as well. We have a few others here in the valley and across the country. Thanks again, Matt. It's my Cheers. pleasure. Thanks for being here. I think it's time to get creative, and the Santinas Valley is the perfect place to find inspiration. Let's head to Gypsy Studios Art Spot in Solvane and learn how visitors can unleash their inner artists. This is going to be fun. Christy, thank you so much for having us out. Thank you. Please tell us about your space. Yeah, um, well, we opened this space back in June of this year, so it's fairly new. But we had summer camps running throughout the whole summer for kids. And then as soon as that was over, we decided to open um, five days a week. That's fantastic. What's your business model? What do you do here at the Art Spot? Yeah, well, during our open hours, we have the availability to just come in. Anybody can come in. Um, doesn't matter your age, you know, walking, toddling around to, you know, 90s. Um, you can come, come in and you can paint here. You can do ceramics, you know, model clay. And so several different art mediums. Yeah, and then on top of just being open and open studio, we also have classes for toddlers and kids. We have a process art class, which is really cool. Um, and that is art making that's less about what the end product or end result is, but more about the process. And uh, it's pretty awesome for kids. Uh, it builds confidence and courage and all sorts of like decision making skills. So. Yeah. And you are in the heart of the Santinas Valley in Solving, the mm -hmm. Danish capital of America. And so what were you doing before you had your brick and mortar? What, what kind of things do you, did you offer or do you offer For the still? painting of the vineyard? Yeah. yeah. So um, if you're interested in, actually you don't even have to be interested in wine technically, but if you like wine, <laughs> it helps. Um, so very similar to like a paint and sip model, which a lot of people are familiar with. Um, we have that sort of idea, but I think way better. Um, we go out into the vineyards and you're painting the scenery that you see in front of you while you're sipping on the wine from that winery. And, um, and I just break down this, the view step by step. And we have that available. We also do watercolor workshops now where you can go into the vineyard or I can come to you or you, know, you can arrange your own location. And um, we do a little like botanical watercolor event and that's a little bit shorter, which is kind of fun too if you don't have as much time. Um, but it's super fun and I mean people basically just go and fall in love with this vineyard they're painting and enjoy the wine and it's, it's all way, of my favorite things. <laughs> yeah, it's a way to connect to the Santinas Valley, right? A, yeah. a sense of place mm -hmm. and, and where we are. Mm -hmm. And now you've just enhanced it by having a, a physical space yeah. to be able to offer so much more. Yeah, that's and you can fantastic. take, you know, locals can come here and they can um, take classes and things like that, but we also have drop-in classes and private lessons available um, 
whenever you're in town. All right. Yeah. This all sounds great. Uh, can we try something out? Maybe paint something? Yeah, I'd love to. That'd be terrific. Thank you. Okay. So you're going to dip your uh, paintbrush into the yellow first, and this is just your first layer. So we're just drawing right now. You'll okay. be covering this. Okay. going to do is take um, the majority of this white mm -hmm. and kind of pull some of it away from the edge. Just leave a little bit there so that you have some left. Okay. And then you're going to grab a little bit of the blue and a tiny bit of that green and blend it together. You make green. a sky. Yes, yeah, so this is the green and that's green the blue. Layer, got mm -hmm. it. Don't need too much of it. Okay. More blue than green. Okay, and then kind of push your brush down so you get the excess paint off it so it's not quite so thick and gloppy on there. Okay. And uh, that's about it. Good job. All right. <laughs> Way to go. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Fantastic. How can folks come and join you? You can find us online um, uh, at gypsystudiosart.com and studios is plural. Um, and you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram, um, Gypsy Studios Art, and also Gypsy Studios Art Spot. So this place, this location, um, we call the Art Spot. So you can find us um, on social media and in those ways. All right. Yeah. Thanks again, Christy. Thank you. Not far from Solvane is Los Olivos. This quaint town features galleries, shops, and a location that perfectly blends food and wine. Let's check out the Los Olivos Wine Merchant and Cafe. Shonda and Sam, thank you so much for having us out today. Thank uh, you for coming. Tell us a little bit about the history of the Los Olivos Wine Merchant Cafe. Uh, I just started off as just the Los Olivos Cafe, about half the space. In 2001, we decided to uh, take over the space next door and open up a wine store, Los Olivos Wine Merchant. So then it became the Los Olivos Wine Merchant Cafe. And uh, we have about 600 different wines from the local central coast of California, mostly Santa Barbara County, with a smattering of other wines from Napa, France, Italy, other wine areas as well. You tell people who have lived here, like when it was just the cafe, call yes. us the cafe. The cafe. And then the newcomers, the people that came in, I think people started really recognizing that we have a wine merchant, you know, even though we've been doing it for now you know, quite some time, right. um, they call us the wine merchant. Yeah. So oh, the, right? the newbies wow. or the people coming from LA were the wine merchant and then to the people who live here were the cafe. The cafe. <laughs> but we're both. And the idea for the wine merchant was that if somebody came here and uh, had a great glass of wine and wanted to take a case home with them, um, they can, uh, you know, if they like the wine, they can uh, go to the wine store and get a case for a case of wine for great prices and take it home with them. Yeah. And uh, so we're both a wine store and a restaurant and um, we want to be the place where we match wine friendly cuisine with uh, great wines of the local area. And you have a farm close by as well, is that correct? Yes, we have a... Um, we have a farm and we have a vineyard. A farm and a vineyard. Farm our, and yeah, a vineyard, on our right. vineyard, Couldn't basically be more down the road. Resource, yeah, just down exactly. the road. Yeah, it's all CCOF certified organic. Wow. Yeah, so we have um, um, about a two or three acre organic farm and uh, we grow our own produce. We bring all the produce to the restaurant. Uh, depending on the time of year and what grows here, you have different kind of produce that comes from the, from the uh, farm. Lettuce that we have on one of our dishes, uh, that grows all year round, so we always have fresh lettuce here. Uh, yeah, it makes we, such a difference. And people yeah. love, I mean, people who don't normally love salads love our right. salads because it's like, wow. And then, like, our daughter that went off to college is like, Mom, like, I can't even eat lettuce anywhere. Like, you spoiled me too yeah. much. <laughs> it's yes. like the first time you have that organic tomato yeah. and you find out like, what a tomato oh, is supposed to taste like. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, with some vegetables, what's really incredible, which I didn't know until I started farming, was that uh, the first day you pick the lettuce, that's going to be the best flavor of that lettuce. Every day that you wait to eat it, the flavor diminishes a little bit. Mm. So sometimes we'll pick, um, we'll harvest, we harvest twice a week, and sometimes we'll pick it in the, in the morning or harvest it in the morning and you'll have it on your salad plate that afternoon, which is about as fresh as you can get. Wow, that's, that's really fantastic. Cool. Uh, 
Well, this all looks amazing, and again, lucky Sky Live get to do this. Uh, <laughs> uh, could you please take us through what we have in front of us that we're going to be eating today? Okay, so the first uh, dish will be our little gem salad right over there. We have uh, little gem lettuce from our own um, uh, farm, and then we have our own um, uh, radishes in there, uh, shaved radishes, and our own beets on there as well. So that goes into that salad. We also add some uh, grapes and some uh, gorgonzola and with our chef's uh, dressing. And so that's a really and fresh pistachios salad. pistachios to add a nice little Pistachios, crunch. and it's a really fresh salad. You get to taste the Central Coast, literally, because that came from our farm about a mile away. It's uh, about as fresh as you can get. Great. Uh, the second dish is our homemade ravioli. It's our cheese and mushroom ravioli that we make in-house. In fact, all our sauces and everything is made in house. In house, we make our own ketchup. We make our own mayonnaise. <laughs> all of our pastas, um, we make our own pastas. And the reason we chose this dish, it was our top seller for this past year. And then over here we have our steak, and uh, uh, the steak is made with tater tots. It's made with uh, cilantro from our own uh, farm as well. Grass-fed beef. Grass-fed beef, natural, natural beef, so no hormones or antibiotics, so it's natural beef. We use all uh, natural beef and natural chicken. Well, it all looks amazing, and I noticed also we have a, a couple of wine selections in front of us. Could you take us through the wines we'll be pairing with the... Sure. So we have one of our top uh, by-the-glass sellers here at the cafe, which is a Storm Sauvignon Blanc, local producer, uh, a local winemaker, comes in all the time, has lunch here makes a wonderful Sauvignon Blanc that everybody just loves. Uh, and then we have our own uh, Brunat 2012 Syrah that we make on our property. We have a little uh, four acre vineyard and uh, most of the vineyard is, about half of the vineyard is about this Syrah and this is our flagship wine which is our Brunat Syrah that we make. Wow. And actually the vines, he planted the vines before the cafe even started. So yeah. that was, he actually started making wine before the restaurant was even a an idea. Well, the idea to come out here was that uh, I wanted to come out here and buy a piece of property where I can plant my own vineyard and make my own wine with my own grapes, and that's what got me out here. And then uh, once I got out here, you know, bought the restaurant, started the restaurant, made wine, and so that's, I can't believe it's been like almost 25 years. 25 years. Yeah, Congratulations incredible. on that. It's a, a real accomplishment in this day and age for sure. And Thank you. you Especially in the restaurant business. Yes. <laughs> and it uh, could not be more farm to fork than, than what we've got here today. So Agreed. before we dig in, a little toast of the Sauvignon Blanc. Cheers to Ernst Cheers. Storm for making a great wine. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Cheers. This was amazing, everything, the salad, the ravioli, the steak, so good. And uh, can you remind us what this red wine is? It's also very delicious. Thank you. Well, the red wine is our Bernat 2012 Syrah, and it goes great with that steak that uh, we're having. And, um, mm. you know, I think it's aged really well, and it'll age for uh, really well many more years to come. But it tastes fantastic right now, and I think it'll just get, get better. I agree. Absolutely. Please tell us how we can find out more about the Los Olivos Wine Merchant Cafe. Visit our website at winemerchantcafe.com and um, we also you can purchase all of our wines. Um, like Sam said, we feature over 500 mostly local wines, so if you just want to peruse our wine selection, you can do that at shop.winemerchantcafe. And then um, Facebook, we are at, at Los Cafe, and then Instagram and Twitter, we are at LO Wine Cafe. Fantastic. Thanks again for having us out. This is super fun. I'm going to finish up my steak, and we'll see you at the next spot. <laughs> thank you, Shelby. Cheers. Yeah, thank you, guys. Cheers. I'm really excited to be heading to our next location. Calira Winery blends California grapes with Australian winemaking style, which can only mean incredible results. They also recently celebrated the grand reopening of their new tasting room, and we're going to check it out. 
Mike. Shelby. Thank you so much for having us out to Calira, an iconic brand in the Santinas Valley as well as the world, I would say. Please tell us about the history and how did you get into winemaking? I, st I started winemaking when I was in Australia. I uh, worked my first year out of college for one of the oldest wineries in Australia, Hardy's. And uh, at the same time, I was applying for schools in both France and Montpellier and also at UC Davis. I got accepted to both schools, but my French really was not that good. So I figured I could probably fake American a little bit. So I went to school at UC Davis in the master's program. I was there for two years, and then I took a harvest job down here in, this, in, the, in Santa Maria, actually, at that point, and became associated with the wineries around here, the winemakers back at that point. And that was early 80s, so there really weren't too many of us around at that point. And uh, I worked here at the same facility when it was San Inez Valley Winery. I worked for Zaka Mesa. And while I was at Zaka Mesa, I kind of got the idea I needed to have my own little brand. So I started, that was the first year I crushed kind of in the back like a lot of guys do, and uh, made some of my first wines there at uh, Zaka Mesa. The label itself, a Calira, uh, they're all Australian Aboriginal artwork pieces that I, have, I collected when I was younger. And the name itself translates as a wild and pleasant place. Wild as in the outback, not as in wild party kind of outback. So we didn't do things quite the same way as everybody else was. When I first started, you know, one of the first questions I asked when I was in the valley, when I was working here, was like, why is nobody making dessert wines? And my answer I got was, nobody likes sweet wines. And we know that's not true. So back in 84, I started making the first of my dessert wines and we made a vintage port. And then we went on to muscats and late harvest and it's all history. Wow, what a great story. Thank and thank you again for having us out today. What kind of wine, what do we have out in front of us here? Well, we've got a little bit of everything. This is a, a Riesling. This is from one of the oldest Riesling vineyards here in the valley, out on Fox, Fox and Canyon Road. We have a Merlot, which is from the, one of the original vineyards planted in the valley, which is as you, from here, a stone's throw from here. And then the last one is a Tawny Port. And for those not familiar with Tawny Port, Tawny Port is traditionally aged in kind of like a Solera system. So the wine is made and then each year you take a little bit out and you add some new wine and a little bit out and new wine. So this blend at this point has wine up to 20 years old in it. Huh. So, and hence the color and the name Tawny referring to the, the color. And so, yeah, help me again. First one, so this is a Riesling from a Fox and Canyon Road. It's a little vineyard out there right at the beginning. It was, again, it was planted probably 45 years ago now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we kind of came across this at the end of the year. Well, you know, as it, some of the fruit became available. Cheers. Cheers. Riesling, you know, it's one of those varieties which everybody has this vision of sweet, sickly, you know, mm -hmm. Riesling. Uh, whereas Riesling, in my personal opinion, I think Riesling is one of the best grape varieties out there. You can make dry wines, sweet wines, sparkling wines, dessert wines, ice wines, anything with it. It, it gives, and a lot of the Riesling, I may get in trouble here, but a lot of the Riesling that's grown in California is blended in with Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Chenin Blanc to give it some fruit in the background. Mm. So we've made Riesling on and off since back in the early 80s and part of the, a large part of the vineyard here and including the part of the vineyard across the road there is the original plantings. As you say, not overly sweet, no. dry, mm -hmm. balanced. You certainly can tell it's a, a Riesling, but yeah, it's just, you could drink a lot of this. It's a variety that works well with food because it tr tends to have good acidity, so it works well with a lot of different types of food styles. It has a lot of aromatic qualities to it, so it works again with fish and, and it works great just by itself. Hmm. And then we have... The second one, this is a Merlot, and again from a vineyard here, which is one of the first plantings. And I will step back a little bit. Most of the vineyards that we can see from here were, some, were the first vineyards planted in the San Inez Valley. And as, as much as one of our competitors would like to say they were the first estate winery, this was actually the first winery in the San Inez Valley to make wine from its own grapes. Huh. And it was the San Inez Valley? San Inez Valley Winery. Huh. And what year was that? The original wines were the first, some of the first bottlings were in 1973. And uh, some of the vines, earliest vines planted were in 1968. So some of wow. those vines are 50 plus years old now. Right. 
And our third wine. Third wine, as I mentioned, this is our Tawny Port. That's the color. Um, it's made with red grapes, but with the aging, as, and as I mentioned, some of this wine is up to 20 years old now. It drops out the color, and the reds kind of go to that tawny brick color, for lack of a better oh description. Oh boy, yeah, deep caramel. They get kind of its nutty characters to it with the age, and the nice I, idea behind this is that, like I said, it's, it's kind of done like a Solera Sherry, where each year you bottle some of it and then add some new wine. So. At this point, some of this wine, is, as I mentioned, is up to 20 years old, so you can't vintage date it, obviously, because of that, but it, it gives you a consistent product from year to year, and because it, that flavors keep on developing, and the new wine you put in freshens it a little bit, but it still has that good background notes to it. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> and these are fortified wines. They're, uh, we use like an, uh, an aged brandy to bring the alcohol level up, to, and that's how the fermentation is stopped. So what can someone expect when they visit the winery? For, for me, it's always been wine is, you know, most of the wine in the world is not drunk by connoisseurs and wine writers. It's drunk by farmers and, you know, the people who live in France, Italy, Spain, and Australia. But it, it got this strange vibe around it, you know, where wine was, you know, so you know, untouchable and stuff. Whereas wine is for everybody. So we like to approach people when they come in that, you know, I can't tell you you're going to like this wine. Try it. If you like it, that's great. Because, you know, I'm, I'm very brazen of me to tell you what you're going to like. So we have a lot of different styles. We have Riesling, we have sweet wines, we have dry wines, we have big reds, light reds, we have dessert wines. So we try to think that we've got something for everybody. How many acres? There's, uh, we have 18 acres planted. The vineyard in front of us is all a new planting. And that's mainly for our wine club. So we have eight different varieties growing in there. So we do smaller lots that are aimed just for the wine club and the tasting room. Do you hold events? Huh? We do. We hold a lot of events. Our grape stomp that we do each, in each October, that eight goes back 30 plus years now. And uh, it always amazes me what the people will get in those bins and jump up and down all day. And I think <laughs> it's the best thing in the world. But when you're around it all, some, all harvest long and you're up to your elbows in, it's not quite as you know, appealing, but yeah. to them it seems to be. So. Sure. And we have music uh, a couple of times during the year. We have movies that we show on the back lawn. We have a big screen we set up and people just sit back and watch a movie. And so During the year we have events for different charities. We have uh, events for the wine club. So we pretty much, it's a busy year. Yeah, that's fantastic. Where can we find out more about Kalira? At our website, which is aptly named kalirawinery.com. And that gives you a, a link to the wines. It gives you a link to the events we have during the year. It'll give you the dates for the movie nights and different events that we have. Well, I'm going to dig back into the wine here, Mike. Thank you again so much for having thank us out. Thank you. Appreciate and, uh, it. Cheers. Cheers. It's been another wonderful day in the Santinas Valley. I'm going to head back into the Sideways Inn for a good night's sleep, and I look forward to my knock-and-drop breakfast. We'll see you next week on Discover the Santinas Valley.